اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم انڈبل جسٹس کرمانی صاحب ایم فرسٹ ہیپی دیٹ فور آس آس آنڈر پینل آر سٹوڈنٹس آف جس یونیورسٹی اینڈ کنٹیمپوریز آلموس ریڈنگ ایٹ دی سیم ٹائم شیفی شوک ہیز بین مائی کلاس فلو جناب رحمہ راہی صاحب شفی شوک صاحب اور ریاض رفائی صاحب اور میرے دوست رفیق راز صاحب I take I'll be taking a departure because I had an idea that the audience here is mostly the students so I have made my presentation in English language and I feel a bit comfortable with that language. You will forgive me for that. That doesn't mean that I am against Kashmiri. Uh, in fact, we had a Kosher cultural forum in the university. Uh, Shafi Shok and myself and Rahi Saab and Margoop Saab, you were our teachers at that time and we used to have in the Gandhi Bhavan regular functions uh, in Kashmiri language only. But you will forgive me for taking a departure and this is not in any way uh, any disrespect towards my mother tongue which I can speak very fluently but I am not that articulate as you have people on the panel. I am thankful to uh, Jinnab Zarif Saab and Rufai Saab for giving me an opportunity to make a presentation on Zarif Saab's valuable contribution Tarangari. I am not an authority on Kashmir literature. A galaxy of them is present in this hall. In, pre in presence of these veterans of Kashmiri language and literature, I feel Lilliputian. Having been asked to review poetic collection by one of our famed poets, Zarif Ahmad Zarif, I am caught up in a threatening situation. Why I am caught up in a threatening situation? Because I see on the dice Azra Pounds and Eliots of Kashmiri literature and equally in the French rows sitting here. I strongly feel perhaps I am not the right person to comment on his latest collection Tarangari. But for my personal admiration for his steadfastness, uprightness and bleeding heart for his fellow brethren, I took the risk and accepted the offer of making a very humble presentation on the valuable contribution that has added one more shade to our beautiful literary landscape. My presentation would be more an expression of gratitude for his voicing concern over the agonized life of people rather than a critical appreciation or a review in strict sense. It's not easy to tell truth the bitter truth in a situation that has been very subtly summed up by Rai Saab in one of his verses Yeti Zevita Kalmas Pahradaro Pahradaro Dubrai Dilish Badnam Sapos teachers Thank you Chalo thank you it truly needs sheer courage to wear one's heart on one's sleeve in a situation as that has been obtaining in our state. Where thoughts and expressions are captives, where minds have been occupied, it's very difficult for any literary person to give vent to his real thoughts and aspirations. Zarif Ahmad Zarif has now been adorning our literary landscape for past five decades. He is an accomplished essayist and a poet. He has been versifying in all forms of 
poetry, guzzles, nazams, quadrants and satire. Satire, that's what I believe, is his fort. It has made him what I would love to call as people's poet. A poet who has endeared him to the people of the state. What makes him as distinctive from what makes him distinctive from some of his other contemporaries is that he writes in a different style as he rightly says he rightly says about his writing I am quoting Zarif Saab I have been so far preventing my poetry from ambiguities and unnecessary literary complexities that some men of letters made out fashionable and have become out of and have become order of the day. The purpose of my writing is to provide relief to my parched land, to my parched beautiful land, and to provide comfort and solace to my tormented brethren, and to wake them up and make them realize that they are not inanimate, lifeless, but full of life and vibrancy. His prose as well as poetry touches our heart. Like an ace archer, he shoots words that straightway pierce heart and stirs the minds. Tarangari is his first poetic collection. In 2008, his essay compilation, his essay comp compilation Khabar Togma Vanun was very well received in literary circles of our state. It was seen as a major contribution to the scant Kashmiri prose. True, he has been writing in all literary forms, but satire is definitely his fault, whether it is his prose or poetry. Since antiquity, satire has been recognized as an important art form. It has been popular with several Greek playwrights. It has, I'm quoting, it has endured throughout as Western history as a form of cultural critique, I would love to call satire as literature with a purpose and satire serve as a harbinger of errors in the society. The role of satirist in the words of Jonathan Swift is to mend the world as far as they are able, correct vices and reinstate virtues in the society. Literature is brimful with works of great satirists that forced their societies to introspect and to look into fads, fancies, follies, and foibles. Take Jonathan Swift's uh, model proposal or Mark Twain's Huckleberry Finn. These two works unrepentantly illuminate the ills of their respective societies. I cannot imagine a news report more powerful than those finely crafted words of satire it is the honesty and humanism of satire that makes it so valuable in that it forces the reader viewer to reflect upon his own shortcomings <coughs> patriotical and satirical poetry has made role in nations nations freedom struggles not to stand satire usually being witty it has generated powerful literary movements against brutal rulers and colonizers. Through cleverly crafted criticism, satirists have infused spirit of freedom in people and geared them up by dwarfing, uh, by, dwar by drawing caricatures of the tormentors and the usurpers. In our situation, I see a great role played by Travadors, the institution of Travador, Yatasladi Shachwanan, might have been there for centuries, but during late 50s, that is uh, my childhood, it had emerged as a well-established institution of political satire. In a situation when press was Puzzled, people were gagged, intimation and 
intimidation and terror had become the order of the day almost a second nature of the rulers and the and the and the and the people who were at the helm of affairs and fascism was manifest in its ugliest form at that time these travadors through his satire strengthened people's belief in their political goals and in their political beliefs is not only the ministerials and the travadors that through the improvisational satirical poetry have been castigating the alien rulers their cohorts and collaborators but even great poets through their satire have criticized their rulers <coughs> literary history of our land is full of poets that have lived up to self esteem uh, talking about gani and others before rai saab will be making myself very humble uh, jl tiku in his persian poetry writes that kashmiri poets deplored any compromise even for fulfilling physical needs he illustrates his point by quoting nadim kashmiri and gani kashmiri in the literary galaxy of kashmir poets like hamidullah shahabadi 1783 to 1848 who lived during afghan and sikh rule stands out as a great satirist who through his deeply satirical poetry conveyed uh, his conveyed his rancor at the poet at the poor state of affairs of kashmir in the words of uh, we had for we were fortunate enough to have two important books uh, in this uh, uh, couple of years back one is by chakradekha zutshi and another is by mirdu rai uh, about the dogra rule and the sikh rule they are wonderful uh, works that have been done on kashmir under the guidance of asha professor asha jalal who happens to be niece of sadat husain mantu and has half blood is half kashmiri that way <coughs> in the literary galaxy of poets uh, sorry in the words of chatrajit khazuchi far from re retreating into oblivion in the 20th seven years of sikh rule kashmiri voices articulated a sense of belonging for their land a land that now required a loyalty of the inhabitants to rise from the depths of its suffering and tribulations unquote she recognized hamidullah as one who through his epic satirical works dabuj nama and uh, and the other book condemned the rulers and the people for allowing the beautiful valley to slide into chaos and ugliness an important voice of kashmir like hamidullah mirza mohammad Mahdi, who used pen name Mujrim, described in his Dewan the administration, administrative chaos for which he holds psychophants of Sikh government mainly responsible. In exposing them, in he indulges in public satire, lampoons them, and castigates uh, the people like uh, Maharaja Sher Singh and his courtiers. He even describes them as scars of God, although. i quote although his experience is not as bold as we come across in babuj nama writes rk pomo pyramo it is quite piercing and stiff many other poets have made society to introspect dwarf for the tyrants dwarf dwarf for the tyrants in the eyes of people through their satirical works i even see gulamahmad mahjur's azadi as a masterpiece of satire people may disagree but uh, i i look it as a satire i will not hesitate in comparing the work of zarif saab to the works of these great masters of yester years zarif saab satire is piercing and stiff like a cork borer through his satire he wriggles out laughter from everyone irrespective of their understanding of poetry and its nuances and makes the wise and the stupid and makes the wise and the stupid to introspect together he has a distinctive style that is nothing but zarif style in this collection of poems 
he largely avoids what in general terms would be called literary phraseology or literary or um, hybrid literary uh, forms instead he uses mundane common phrases and gives them a mag magical spin that bru that bruises consciousness of people uh, here is a verse i am quoting if agar bhi galat parat maafi dijo see spin in his words in this verse let me uh, put it like this in this verse he compares uh in fact this verse i have seen as he sums up our whole situation in just one verse when he says that this could have a common man can understand his language very well he says that as ho uh shuch to go show now dear he says it so so uh well i me should do it but i can't read it nobody else can say it like this he sums up the whole thing that how we were deceived how we were <coughs> how we were uh, beguiled and we were shown one thing and given another thing he sums up it so wonderfully i can't express myself his artistry in chiseling of words converting them into sharp sharpeners is unique to him he very subtly exposes the duplicity of the leaderships in verses like uh, which he quotes um, i have translated that uh, the soaring into skies is wasteful i would request him because i can't uh, do it the way he does it the soaring in the skies is wasteful climb what will they gain by going up in the skies over bob advise us to be pedestrian himself loves flying in a uh, helicopter this is trickery this is trickery kalaskar what sir sir you wonder someone asman ko boom kya hua ban potri papun do baban Those fun is a ten after each. So uh, he, no, nobody can say it like this. I, I am yet to see. I am a student of Kashmiri literature, though I don't write in Kashmiri, but I have been studying. Uh, I have not seen uh, things said in such subtle language, in such subtle manner, where you sum up the whole phenomena in just one stanza. that is what zarif sahab has done in this he has summed up my pain my agony my uh, tormentation for all these that from the day i was born i have i am a tormented person and he has summed me up wonderfully in these verses he holds mirror to the society enables and enables it to see its ugly face and enables it to see its ugly face with pox marks dotted with oozing words and marks uh, the society re to realize that in one no no for from no one from outside has made him to look like that but it is his own people his own uh, the people we worship the people we admire uh, it is they who have made our life our face look like uh, with full 